Wow, Hi. I'm here with the iconic Go-Go's. You Hello. guys Tina. were my entire life growing up. So this is super exciting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's so funny that we're all, I'm meeting you through Stranger Things, which was like sort of like a warm hug from the 80s, a little scary, but you know, is that sort of how you felt kind of going back and sort of seeing the way things were? Um, I don't know who wants to answer that. <laughs> you mean watching the show? Yeah, yeah. Did you sort of feel like how authentic it was and it, did it kind of bring you back to those days too? I did a great job. Yeah. And it's like, it's really fun to watch. I mean, that adds that extra element, you know, set back in that time. And uh, yeah, they did a great job. Yeah. Yeah. I love how it's 80s, but I mean, it also could be any time. It feels modern to me too. And every time that um, Eleven wore uh, overalls, I was like, oh, I remember overalls. <laughs> <laughs> I still wear them. What do you mean? Everything in that show, I still wear. I Gina doesn't throw anything out. I no. don't, no, I don't blame. Well, it's interesting because I think a lot of the fashion from then is coming back. Like I have a 21 year old and she wears mom jeans, which were like the Ew. jeans we wore. Um, you know, did you kind of, you guys were always fashion trailblazers. I remember I would always watch what Belinda would be wearing and then I'd run out and go to Express and buy whatever she had on. Um, <laughs> you know, tell me a little bit, maybe Belinda, how, you know, when you would choose your outfits for going on stage, was there any process or were you just grabbing and putting it together? Well, back then we couldn't really, you know, back in the early days, we couldn't afford, you know, clothes really. So all of our stuff was, was from thrift, thrift shops. So, you know, we could look really cool on like $2, you know, the whole outfit from head to toe. <laughs> um, and, you know, we, we just went, you know, we just went with what we like. We each have a different look in the band. We, we go with what our taste is. It was never like, you know, we had to dress a certain way. So we just always went with what we liked and, and what we could afford, really. Yeah. The one yeah. thing that's funny is that when I see pictures from the 80s, we were doing great on our own. And the only time we start looking like goofballs is when we got a stylist to help us. Yeah. It was like, so and then our outfits started looking like clowns. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> we all copied it still. So I mean, it's kind I'm of- I'm sorry, funny. we're sorry for that, okay? That is that is okay, that is okay. Um, you know what I thought was interesting too is I love the way Stranger Things would pull out really cool songs with what we listened to. And they picked out Get Up and Go from you guys. Yes. Do you have anything to do with the input on getting the song last season? No, not at all. But I mean, anytime you can get a, a song on a really great show, it's like super thrilling and stuff. And I always was like honored that we got uh, played in the same show as The Clash got played. So I just thought that was really cool because they played, um, should I stay or should I go? It was like, yeah, The Clash. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So tell me then about this concert. It seems pretty cool. I know you guys were doing tours and you guys were on stage in 86. Um, what is this about with the Upside Down and this whole virtual show you guys are going to do? Well, we were on our way to Hawkins to do a Doritos festival, which by the way, was not the first Doritos festival we've done. We've wow. done more than one. And the um, we had this, oh, oops, I almost scored, a really crazy accident. And that's how we ended up in the Upside Down. And we ended up stuck there. And then just we're like, okay, we may as well do the concert. So we did. And it was like super scary because we were getting attacked by creatures. But also it was fun because we got to do what we love, which was play live. Yeah. What you're doing now, well, you're in a, you're in a break right now. Is that right? With the tour and then you're going to go overseas? Mm-hmm. Okay. Tell me about, you know, what it was like kind of getting back on the road um, post-pandemic and, you know, <laughs> why is Gina cracking up? <laughs> well, because I, uh, well, I never got on the road. <laughs> I've been oh. for a couple of years with health issues. I had some yeah. surgery on my hand, so I didn't oh. actually, I didn't get to play, but uh, the, the, my- It's really, up. really hard because yeah. uh, it's really sad that musicians I, and bands I think are really taking the brunt of COVID now because you know one person one person on your crew gets sick and everything comes to a halt and grinds to a halt so it's like really fun and really exciting to be doing it again but it's also there's a level of stress that there never was before you know yeah. and 
and you know you, you want to keep your bubble but you've just played your hometown and it's like and everybody wants to come back and hang out but what if it's just like it's really different and really hard and my heart goes out every single day I see friends of mine that are having to cancel again because one yeah. person gets COVID so yeah. it, was, it was a combination of wonderful and stressful yeah we feel um, and if I if I might be a blabbermouth, um, one of the weirdest things I think we've ever experienced is doing a show where ev everyone in the audience had to wear masks, so you you could only see their eyeballs and the rest of their face was hidden, and it threw this super weird tangent into the show because like you couldn't really see people's expressions. I mean, looking out on this sea of masks was odd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and especially when you, because you can't go to a go-go show and just sit there. I mean, you got to dance, you got to get into it, so, you know. You that, spread some germs. <laughs> that's what punk rock's all about. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, but you are gearing up to go overseas in June, is that right? Yes. As far as we know. Yeah, okay. Okay, that'll be that'll be very cool. And you know, I I have to touch on something too. I just recently rewatched the documentary. It came out in 2020. Watch it, and then I watched it again. And there's so many weird revelations that even fans may not have known. One about like when your music came out, I was like, this is edgy. This is so cool. Like this is the coolest thing I've ever heard. But I know you guys were a little disappointed. It wasn't as hardcore as punk as you you know you wanted it to be i guess do you feel a little differently now real you know knowing you guys basically trailblaze new wave i mean we were you know we had been playing live for years and what are what we were basing this on was it didn't sound like the live performance and right. and in retrospect our brilliant producer richard goderer you know he knew what he was doing and he he really made those songs shine mm -hmm. and um and the lyrics and uh so yes in retrospect of course i mean we know that was all great and wonderful what happened but at the moment in the moment it was like wah where's our <laughs> where's our tough sound you know? we, we thought the record was going to tank because we felt like yeah. we were completely betrayed by richard initially because it, it didn't like Charlotte said it didn't sound like we sounded live it did it wasn't as edgy you know um and and we you know that's what we were hoping for but as charlotte said richard was looking at the bigger picture i think and now when i listen to this stuff i'm like yeah that was that's right on the money you know that's what it should have been uh because it really did allow the songs to shine yeah yeah no it was always edgy and also i was i was gobsmacked when i saw it in 2020 that the go-go's were not in the hall of fame yet and that I just thought, of course they were. So that was shocking. Of course, now you did get inducted. Um, do you think there's something, because I see Dolly Parton just, just now got inducted, is it going to? What is it, these incredible women? I mean, this should have happened a long time ago. Do you feel we're still, we still have a long way to go as women in rock? We're pushing, we're pushing the envelope here. We're trying to have more women included in this. And it is about time. Yeah. I think that the uh, I think the gatekeepers have shifted somewhat. There's, uh, you know, the the people that are in charge of things. It inev invariably it it shifts and changes, and you know things are always ch change is slow. It's always a slow thing, but it seems like with um, that that the door has swung open a bit wider. That's great. Yeah, no. And it's so important. Um, and what kind of advice would you have for young women musicians trying to get into the business um, and get their sound heard? Anything? Any tips? I would tell them to, to keep the faith in themselves. And, and you know, uh, you know, there's a reason why they're doing what they are doing. It's because they're they love it. Um, there's something inside them that pushes them to want to become a great musician or a singer or a songwriter or whatever. And so I think it's like really important to keep faith in yourself because there's going to be a million, there's going to be a lot of folks that are going to turn you down, but it only takes that one yes to make things happen and change it all around like it did for us. We were rejected by every record label in town and then one label liked us and that's how it happened for us. And, and I think anything's possible if you if you really apply yourself and, and, and keep faith in yourself. And then of course, if you're in a band, you have your bandmates and we all sort of are there to support each other. So um, 
anything's possible if you really want it, I think. All right. So just keep swinging from the fences, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's wonderful. Well, it was so great to get to meet you. I mean, like I said, you were my entire adolescence and college and beyond. So um, thank you for, oh, for nice putting out such too. incredible music and, you know, shaping an entire generation. Hey, uh, um, thank you, Gina. Gina, I feel like we should mention one thing um, was kind of the purpose of talking to you today was to let people know that this concert, there's going to be... Um, tickets to the concert on every Doritos bag. So okay. if you if you click on that or whatever, then you'll be able to um, get to watch the virtual concert, which we really hope everybody watches. And then the most exciting thing, there's going to be some golden tickets inside the bag. And if you get one of those, you get a super cool um, guitar. So it would be like, I mean, that would be awesome to win that. Of course it would be. All right, fabulous. All right. Well, I'm sure I'll be getting the links and stuff like that we can put in there. And uh, Gina, are you going to get to go on the road, by the way, in Europe? Or? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, my okay. thumb is completely healed. Okay. And good. I'm in good shape. Thank, thank the Lord. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need your hands. <laughs> thank you, Gina. Thank you. All right, ladies. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, Gina. Thanks a lot. Bye.